building rapport, getting better retention, having people not just like you but trust you is some of the biggest avenues that we need to be able to work on when we first start working with new clients. So let's jump in right now and let's talk about all of the different ways that we can use various touch points and uh, the rationale behind retention that's going to get us the best amount of impact with all of our clients. There is nothing more important than the power of retention in the health and medical industry. Let's be completely uh, open and honest about it. You know, people are talking about some of the, you know, some of the finer details of their personal life. You know, what maybe what medication they're on. Maybe they want to talk about, you know, different uh, chronic diseases that they have. Some people feel uh, ashamed or embarrassed about certain scenarios. So for them to actually open up and and be honest and real uh, with us. Uh, takes a lot more than just a few little bits of, oh, here's a script we tell them when we book in. Uh, and this all goes to the avenue of human marketing and how we actually create a human. We're not business to client or business to business. This is about being able to market you know, human to human. This is actually about um, you know, being able to empower people and being compassionate, but being able to make sure that we get the right people that we're you know, suited to be able to work with first and foremost. But what happens when we actually start to, uh, we see you know, more clients, we see them for an initial assessment and we start working with them? What are some of the touch points that actually are going to help us uh, get better attention uh, and make sure people understand that we are on this journey with them, whether it's an acute uh, you know, neck or back pain or a rolled ankle at soccer or something like that, through to uh, you know, a more longer term approach for someone who might have a lot of comorbidities with diabetes, overweight, high blood pressure, etc. And we need to make sure that we're across all of these because ultimately the number one thing is people can like you. Uh, people, will, first of all, will know about you. They will like you, but we need to get them to trust us because a lot of the time we're not able to just click our fingers and get a better result. We can't make them, uh, you know, have 30 kilo weight loss and, you know, their HbA1c of their diabetes go from 12 to 6, right? Like we can't just do that. Um, and so we need to be able to, in many cases, work with people over longer periods of time. So trust becomes a bigger factor in this process. We need to be able to develop a relationship. We need to have a better rapport with each of our clients or patients so that we do actually have that time to deliver the result that they ultimately want from us and are trusting us to be able to help them and deliver for them and with them. So in this situation, we have to first look at the human psyche. We have to look at the mentality of the human brain and the biology of that. And what we do know from science is the fact that we are all desperate to belong. It's all about feeling. It's about getting the social uh, receptors, you know, your, your dopamine hips, you're having your oxytocin and things like that flowing so that we feel better about ourselves or the situation, the people that we work with, the people that we, you know, hang around with, etc. And so understanding that we've got a support mechanism and a support group around us is key for us uh, thinking like patients do and ultimately being able to put the right things in place. So when we start to understand that, that it's all about feeling, and we can throw in those cliches that we hear all the time, you know, people don't care what you say or what you do. It's only, you know, they don't truly understand until, you know, they, they understand how you feel, you know, how you make them feel and all this type of stuff. You know, insert one of about six different, uh, uh, you know, little motivational quotes there, of which I probably just bastardized three of them into the one. But anyway, um, and so here, here's the thing. We need to make people feel comfortable. We need to make people feel that they're in the right place. And so we need to be able to make sure that you know, there's a lot of avenues of that, uh, you know, the initial assessments and our uh, clinical skills that are honed into that area. But what I wanted to make sure that we covered today in this podcast is all about what else can be done after you see them for the first time or maybe the second time, for instance. We want to make sure that we 
if we're saying to them that, you know, we've set up this journey, you know, there's this pathway we're going to take, you know, maybe it's going to be a four to six week process and we've laid that out in the first assessment, that we actually follow through with that and we're congruent, right? Really important word there, congruency. We've got to be congruent and actually deliver what we tell them we are going to do. Now, that's not just the outcome. That's not us saying we can deliver the following result in four weeks and go ahead and deliver that. That's about us delivering that result, but also delivering what we've ultimately made them feel and understand. And that is the relationship of what we're working with them on to achieve. If we are asking the right questions and getting to know them and building that trust in the early stages of that rapport and relationship building process, then we should be naturally wanting to be able to reach out and help them further through that process as well. We need to be congruent to make sure they see that and they feel that. There's no use us trying to turn around and, you know, we're on this journey together. Here's this pathway, you know, myself and the team, we're going to do this. We're going to give you the following. We're going to promise the world, etc., and then not have any contact with them until their next session a week later. Or maybe they're doing a group scenario and all of a sudden it's all about them. But the moment they pay and walk out or book another appointment, etc., they don't hear from us until their next time that they're paying us money. And we have to be really brutal with the honesty around these type of discussions because there are a lot of people in the industry paying lip service to the promises of what they're giving people. And that's not me being rude or arrogant. That's me just being completely honest and truthful because I know, you know, there has been times where I've been in that situation. And so we all need to be accountable for delivering more value and more time and more effort and ultimately being more congruent to what we tell them we're going to do for them and with them. So that's one of the biggest parts we need to understand first and foremost. This is a journey. This might be some health related challenges. It takes more than just, you know, a quick click, click, uh, adjust the spine and out they go and they're perfect again, right? So let's make sure that we actually have the right touch points. So I'll give you a couple of examples of what works really well for ourselves, what works in our clinic, uh, what works with our clients as well. And I'm a big fan of having multiple uh, individual touch points in place because it's one thing to say we've got it all automated and it sends out this and sends out that, but people know it for what it is and it feels a bit clunky. It feels a little bit you know, stale, mundane, and not really personal. So we need to make sure that, first of all, everything that we do is personal and individual to them. So for instance, what we find is absolutely brilliant is after every single initial uh, appointment with any of our therapists, uh, the next day we actually have it set up, uh, and in this part is automated, and it automates inside uh, Trello and notifies a practitioner that, uh, let's say they saw John Smith yesterday, it notifies them to, um, you know, initial... Uh, John Smith and their contact number. And so the therapist will see that. They'll remember, that's right, I saw John yesterday for the first time and today I'm going to call him and make sure that he's okay, see how he went, answer any questions. And that's what we do. Now, most people are sitting there going, oh, I'm too busy, Jason, I can't do this, I can't do that. Well, here's the thing. Uh, We actually know that the vast majority of times We only have one in every three people answer the phone the following day when we call them. The other two people don't actually answer the phone and we're able to leave a message. And so we've got a nice little scripted out message about, you know, hey, I just following up to when I saw you yesterday, I've had another, you know, like I've had another client with a similar situation, blah, 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 and it made me think of you. And so now all of a sudden the person, when they're at work or at school or sometime later, picks up a voicemail from their therapist that actually is just wanting to touch base to see how they went after they saw them yesterday. And that gives people the warm and fuzzies. It gives people that sense of it's personal. It is congruent to what they made me feel yesterday. And we are in this together moving forward. They do care, etc., which ultimately we do. And as a net result, we get better buy-in. Uh, we let them know that if, you know, they, we, uh, if they've got any questions or if they've got a challenge with one of those exercises to please give us a call. And if not, I'll catch up with you on and we insert the detail of their next appointment, yeah, Thursday at 3.30. So we have another sort of reinforcement of their, uh, their next appointment as well. Uh, and so as a net result, we get better accountability. We, it's like having an accountability partner on day one straight off the bat. 
and we know that we're not going to get caught up on, uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, 80-year-old lovely ladies that are wanting to tell you their whole life story the next day and we don't have time for that because we know from our data that that doesn't happen. And so there's, we also have scripts in place so that the therapist normally is getting off the phone in under 90 seconds for any of those clients they are talking with anyway. So we get some really good feedback, we get good congruency, great avenues moving forward, and that rapport and relationship gets a really strong start. So that's one way that we do that. But there's also other ways that we have all the touch point engagements, and we do that through text messages, uh, we do that through emails, we make sure that every single person that comes in for uh, you know about 20, there's more than 20 different conditions, we actually work with our CRM, which is Active Campaign, and we actually have that in place. So it actually will facilitate multiple email follow-ups with them that we're not trying to make it uh, you know, completely automated. We're not selling, we're not doing anything. It's just other touch point engagements of us being able to add value. So if they're coming in uh, and talking about diabetes, for instance, it's set up with the, the actual right tag. So it actually gives them helpful little hints and tips uh, with their journey moving forward. So we're not trying to uh, move everything online and, and make it all automated. We're not trying to uh, pretend that we're doing all of this stuff individually every minute of every day. But as a net result, we're able to make sure that we're more accountable. We're able to make sure they're accountable. We, it's like that little tap on the shoulder reminding them to keep them on track, that we're here, we're the support crew cheering them on from the stands as they do their race or their event. And so as a net result, we have nice little touch points that are personal, that's individual, um, You know, whether it's phone calls straight up the next day, uh, the text message engagement that we have, and our therapist can just correspond in like, you know, the, the Twitter effect, the, the 140 characters or less type scenario. And so as a net result, our adherence and our accountability from every one of our clients over the last two years that we've been really heavy, heavily uh, working on this has improved massively. Our spec, our sessions per episode of care has gone up more than 140%. So as a net result, we're seeing every client more times. We're getting better results. We literally are having no disgruntled uh, clients. You know, the business is booming and we're getting some fantastic impact and people are loving us. We're getting huge amounts of raving fans, which then obviously bring more clients in. And the net result is you're getting massive amounts of more warm leads and people and more impact that you can help more people over a longer period of time with less effort because we are very personalizing our approach, we have the right touch points in place, we uh, make it very clear about how we're going to communicate and the relationship, and we're congruent to delivering exactly what we tell them we're going to from the start of that uh, process. So we get people feeling the way we want them to. We get them more emotionally invested into getting the right result that they're wanting. They open up to us as a net result and tell us everything that we need to know. And we don't have clients holding back, not giving us one or two little crucial bits of information that in other scenarios would be really beneficial. And so as a net result, we really do have a partnership moving forward with each and every one of those clients. So if you're thinking about ways in which you can actually uh, better engage retention, better uh, you know management of each of your clients, what the right sort of touch points are, etc., utilize some of those straight off the bat because you're gonna be able to have some great avenues where you can bring people into you know, evergreen funnels, you can bring them into Facebook groups and all these different other loyalty programs, etc. But first of all, you've gotta make sure that they understand who you are, they understand that you're with them, they feel what you're telling them is true, they have that congruency with you, you know, there is trust there and respect, and as a net result, they're emotionally invested into this like you should be, and you're always gonna get a better result for them. More raving fans, they get what they want, the business grows, and you get more impact. And overall, it's one of the secret sources that so many people could improve on in our industry to get better outcomes and health outcomes and have greater impact for all of their clients. So go ahead, make sure that you've, um, you know, you're know you implementing those. If you've got others that you feel work really well for yourselves, hit me up and let me know. I'd love to hear about them. Uh, that's just only two or three of the, sort of the five or six that we operate on. We know the power of it, and I'd really encourage you to go and utilize them in your business as well to obviously get more time, money, freedom, and impact with each and every one of your clients. I'll talk to you again very soon. Hey guys, thank you very much for listening to another episode of the Profitable Practice Podcast. 
I would love nothing more than for you to be able to leave a review. I get so much joy out of listening and reading the amazing things that you guys say about this. So please subscribe to our channel, leave a review and share it with your friends. Let's get some more fantastic information out there so all of us can grow the industry together. Cheers for now.